Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a review on the Barco CS300 300mm combination square and also on the Silverline Engineers Tri Square, uh, the 5 inch version. Looking at the packaging, first of all, the Barco just comes with a, a cardboard fold over um, label on it doesn't provide any protection to the end of the, um, of the rule. This end you'd think it does but actually it can move up in the package and the last millimetre or so you can see on the end and that can be damaged quite easily. Again the whole of the stock potential for damage in that area as well. So that's a little bit uh, upsetting but looking at mine it seems to have uh, survived transit okay. The Silverline Engineer Square. The stock is well protected with this um, moulded plastic. But the blade just has a thin plastic wrap around it. I can see it's got some grease in there to stop any rust, so that's good. And I'll clean that off before we continue. I think the engineer square is the easiest one to, to check first of all. Um, I'm lucky enough to have another square which I know is accurate so I can uh, simply check it like so. So checking for square, this one in my right hand is the accurate reference. We can see that the I hope you can see there that there's light coming through. Um, whether you can see it as clearly as me, I'm not sure. I can see a, a, there's a larger gap at the far end of the blade. So we'll need to address that. Checking the inside. And that's looking. That's looking like there's an error on the corner on the inside. So I'll have to go and correct that, which will probably take about 10 minutes on some sandpaper. And I've got a video that shows you exactly how you can do that. I've also got a video that will show you another way of checking the accuracy. And it is slightly out of parallel, so that would explain why I'm getting a good square on the one side and the other side slightly out. General construction looks pretty good, um, it's been reasonably well polished, there are no dangerously sharp edges on it. I think it will last well, and apart from perhaps 10 minutes just correcting the, the out of squareness of the blade, apart from that, this square will be perfectly adequate for fine quality cabinetry. The Baco combination square, just checking the corners of the, the rule itself because it wasn't packaged that well. They don't seem to have been damaged visibly, so that, that's good. And a rather rough machining on the ends of the rule. The edges aren't too bad. And I've got my Veritas straight edge here, so I can check the straightness of the rule up against the light. Checking the rule for the Barco combination square, the one side is almost spot on, the opposite side is quite clearly a bump in the middle there. even feel it's slightly rocking. So that'll need a little bit of work. I've got a video on preparing straight edges so you'll better find out how to do that there. 
I could check the, the rule for parallel, but uh, I've already established it's got a bump on one side, so we know it won't be. But I could check it with some calipers. It's a good fit there. That's a good fit there. And not in the middle. It's quite a thick rule, so we'd expect it to actually be fairly straight along its width. Um, and it isn't. And I think that's no great surprise also. Even if it was when it came out of the factory, the fact that it wasn't packaged robustly means that that's probably taken a few, few little bumps along the way. The construction of the rule other than that um, it looks pretty good. The etchings are, are nice and positive. It's marked in both metric and imperial. And it's very clear to read. Let's look at the stock now. Got a level in it. Uh, doesn't appear to be any adjustment for the level. So we'll hope that's, that's correct. I'll do a simple check, which is to check the level in the stock. I've set it down on my workbench and I've aligned it with the dog holes. I'm checking where the bubble is right now, remembering how close it is to the, the one line on the one side. Now I rotate the stock around, line it up precisely on those dog holes again, check the level. And if it's accurate, the bubble should be in exactly the same position, same distance away from the other marker. And in this case, it is. And so that's proved that that is almost spot on level. Obviously it's got the scribe in the end, which screws in. That looks good. It's nice and sharp. The uh, finish on the casting on the inside here is a nice paint finish, slightly rough texture which is nice to hold on to. Looking at the machined faces, the sides clearly being machined on both sides and the faces as well. Slightly rough feel to it but uh, not too bad. Also checking the edges of the stock against straight edge. They all look very good. Checking square on the Barco stock. That's looking very good. To check the 45, I'm going to use, believe it or not, a Barco sliding bevel gauge. And I set this up. So it's a perfect replica of the stock. And now I can check it against my mitre square, which I know is accurate. And that's looking very good as well. It's not good to have the intermediary measuring device, but um, that's the best way I can do it at the moment. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to insert the, the rule and check for the accuracy of that being square when it's tightened down. I always find this tricky to get these back in. There we go. So I want to flush it up to the one end. Tighten it. My reference square. And that's very good. Check the 45. And you can see it becomes quite clear here that there is a bump in the rule. Movement of the, the rule in the stock is quite smooth. We lock it down in a depth measurement and check that for square. That's very good. So I think 10 minutes spent straightening up the edge of the rule getting that parallel 
and we'll have a very good tool. I'm impressed with uh, most of the finish on it and I think it would go on my recommended list. But for fine woodwork I'll still be using my engineer's tri-squares prepared lovely and square. Once that's done, because nothing moves in it, we can be assured that we'll always get accurate readings. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, perhaps you'll consider doing that. I have other reviews on the site, but mainly it's to do with my woodworking, uh, different tools, jigs, uh, projects. Hopefully something for everyone there. Don't forget to check out the website at onemadeod.co.uk And just before I go, a mention for Guy's Woodshop where he's been making a lovely secretaire. Guy uses a lot of power tools in his work uh, but he achieves some really wonderful results by combining them with some hand tools. So check his channel out. Until next time, cheerio!